People have been trying to figure out how we can slowly make our way to space and gradually establish a new life there. What structures and facilities will be required, and what technologies will be used to make life in space possible long term? In today's video, we'll be taking a look at 15 cool space station ideas. Number 15. Blue Origin Orbital Reef Unless you were born yesterday, you know exactly who Jeff Bezos is, and likely gathered around the television set with friends and family to watch the tech billionaire launch himself into orbit and live out his ultimate space cowboy fantasy. But that orbital launch is just peanuts compared to what Mr. Bezos has in store for the future of humanity. The Blue Origin Orbital Reef is a concept space station that aims to be slightly more accessible and inclusive than its initial launch. This concept space station aims to be an orbital luxury hotel that can accommodate up to 400 guests and a place where space tourists can rub shoulders with researchers, scientists, and even government officials. If all goes according to plan, then Blue Origin's Orbital Reef will be the world's first space hotel, and guests will be able to keep their feet on the ground with the artificial gravity, so no need to worry about your room service floating around. There will even be an in-house movie theater, so people can watch their favorite science fiction films and point to the screen and say, hey, I've been there. To turn this dream into a reality, Bezos was given $130 million from NASA and developed a partnership with Sierra Space and Boeing, who will also have to build the Boeing Starliner shuttle to bring guests to and from the orbital reef. Hopefully, this concept space station still gets two-day delivery. Number 14. NanoRack Star Lab. Another commercial low-Earth orbit destination of the future is the NanoRack Star Lab. This concept space station is currently in the early phases of development by Voyager Space and the defense aerospace giant Lockheed Martin, and is probably one of the coolest names we'll see today, Star Lab. It's got a nice ring to it, don't you think? The station is set to launch at the end of the decade, and the teams behind it are planning to have crews constantly going back and forth to conduct research and allow for commercial industrial activity. It may not have the same population size, but Star Lab should be like a small-scale city in space, and so far, the station looks incredibly interesting. It will include a large inflatable habitat built by the folks at Lockheed Martin, along with a metallic docking node, the power and propulsion element, and even a large robot arm to help load and unload cargo and payloads from the space shuttles making the rounds. And eventually, Star Lab will even be home to the George Washington Carver Science Park. The park is set to have a state-of-the-art lab dedicated to scientific research and even have manufacturing capability. So who knows, maybe one day we'll be using things that were delivered from space. Number 13. Northrop Grumman Station Next up on our list of awesome concept space stations is the Northrop Grumman Station. So far the station hasn't been named, but I'm sure that the folks there at Northrop Grumman will come up with something cool and futuristic. This one's going to be a bit more in line with the International Space Station, helping to provide cargo delivery and will be able to support a crew of four at any given time. Eventually, the Northrop Grumman Station is going to be able to accommodate space for researchers, experiments, and even tourists looking to see all the astral sights. The station is going to have multiple docking ports, which will make for some great future expansion. The concept station is just part one of a three-part space project, so you can only imagine what the scale of the final project will be. In the grand scheme of things, the Northrop Grumman Station concept is relatively young, but the company has already announced its partnership with Dynetics, and they will undoubtedly announce even more as time moves on. But when all is said and done, we'll be staring up at a free-flying space station ready for commercial operations and able to meet the demands of the markets with multiple customers. Number 12. Axiom Space The International Space Station has exceeded everyone's expectations, with the joint venture set to only last about 15 years. But we've since moved past that timeline, and the ISS is still in our Earth's orbit, having extended its life expectancy now to 2030, which is very lucky for the concept space station known as Axiom Space. Axiom Space plans to detach its module from the ISS and have it serve as the foundation for their commercial space station come the year 2030. When this new station is fully operational, it's set to have double the usable volume of the ISS, which is 1,000 cubic meters, meaning Axiom is going to be absolutely massive. The folks at Axiom have been lucky enough to team up with NASA during the design and implementation stage of their first commercial module, so you know that you can trust it. 
Then when Phase 2 rolls around, expect to see multiple platforms for the NASA crews to use, which means that Axiom Space is going to be a top destination for astronauts to conduct what can only be described as space trade and offer cheaper alternatives to buying goods that could normally only be purchased from the folks at NASA. Number 11. Voyager Space Hotel Okay, we've seen some interesting space station concepts so far that are perfect for science and research, but now we can take a look at something that's built for all of us. Well, as long as you can afford the price. The Voyager Space Hotel is launched in part by the Orbital Assembly Corporation, and when it's fully operational should have enough rooms for 400 very lucky, probably very wealthy guests. With living pods around a large rotating circle that will be able to produce its own artificial gravity. It's an incredibly ambitious project that, while up in the clouds, is still very much grounded in reality. Expect to see some of the Voyager Space Hotel's modules run by the Gateway Foundation, which are helping to build facilities like the crew quarters while bringing in water, power, and of course, air. But the Space Hotel is going to have all of the usual earthly amenities, like a gym, kitchen, restaurant, and a bar, to make sure every long-term stay is a good one. But even if you're unhappy with the facility, it's not like you'll just be able to hop in your minivan and drive home. So expect some round-the-clock shuttle service making trips to and from Earth. And hey, at least they won't have to sit in traffic. But guests can also expect to run into NASA workers and potential astronauts because the rest of the modules will be set aside for private clients as well. Number 10. Spider Space Station now we can start to turn back the hands of time for a bit. As I mentioned earlier, humans have been looking to spend time in space for decades. And in 1977, a cool concept known as the Spider Space Station was developed. But don't let the name fool you. This wasn't a design strictly to send arachnids into space. The Spider Space Station would have been built with the somewhat limited amount of technology available to researchers and developers at the time, and would have and could have been constructed using space shuttle hardware. A solar array would be taken from the exhausted main fuel tank to power the retro-futuristic Spider space station, with the entire structure having been formed and assembled in just one operation. The shuttle's main engine tank would have been used as the operations control center, and the Spider station would always hold a crew of astronauts with the majority of their missions centering around both the Moon and Mars. The concept for the Spider Space Station was created at the height of the Cold War, when you could cut the tensions between the United States and the former Soviet Union with a knife. And so this would have undoubtedly served as part of the U.S.'s half-baked plan to bring war into the stars. Number 9. The Brick Moon That's no moon. While that may be one of the more popular quotes from 1977's Star Wars, you'll also see that those are words to live by when you hear about this next concept. The Brick Moon Space Station is the earliest known concept and was cooked up by Edward Everett Hale in an issue of Atlantic Monthly all the way back in the year 1868. The concept of a brick moon may sound a little bit silly by today's standards, but I guess we all have to start somewhere. Hale described his brick moon as a 200-foot diameter sphere made entirely of bricks and filled with people that find their way into space. How could it get there in the 1800s is anybody's guess, but sometimes it's better to hammer out the finer details later. But Hale's sci-fi brick moon was more than just a brick mansion in the stars. He envisioned it also as a navigational guide for sea farmers, similar to the North Star, that would serve as a fixed reference point above the Earth's prime meridian that would help travelers to calculate longitude. And yes, Hale knew that his brick moon would never leave the pages of the Atlantic Monthly, but if it did ever see the light of day, it would have taken 12 million bricks to build and cost a quarter of a million bucks, which by today's standards doesn't even come close to the cost of the ISS. Number 8. Artificial Gravity Space Station the United States put the first human on the moon in 1969, but most people don't know that they also had the concept for the first space station that very same year. Perhaps the station is that giant leap for mankind that Neil Armstrong was talking about. The artificial gravity space station concept involved a station rotating on the central axis in order to create its own gravity, keeping everyone inside firmly on the ground despite the location. The idea was brought about because of the delirious effects that the long-term microgravity had on NASA's astronauts, so they figured if they could just keep them in space the entire time, then they would perhaps make their lives a little easier. The gentle yet effective spin of the space station counteracted the weakening of the muscles that astronauts usually suffered from after extended spaceflight, 
But as you can probably guess, this artificial gravity concept never really made it off the ground. And so instead, we have the zero gravity space stations, which are all equipped with workout and exercise equipment, which seem to be the much more practical solution. Number seven, Nuodung's Habitat Wheel. Back in 1929, when most of our sci-fi nerddom only existed in comic books and pulp novels, a man by the name of Herman Nordung designed a space station concept he liked to call the Habitat Wheel. In fact, he was one of the first people to ever create such a detailed technical drawing and outline of a space station, and his design wasn't all that far off. Seeing as how this was done before the age of astronauts, the Habitat Wheel would be a new home for humanity among the stars and mimic much of what we see on Earth, making it a home away from home of sorts. But his Habitat Wheel would derive all of its power from the sun by collecting the heat energy through a concave mirror located smack dab in the space station center. With the energy center being the biggest component, the station would also have an observatory and machine room, which would both be attached to the main living areas via an umbilical cord. You can't deny that his drawing may look a little bit silly by today's standards, but 100 years after his revolutionary idea, we are on the cusp of making Hermann Nording's habitat wheel a reality. Number 6. Manned Orbiting Laboratory The year was 1960, and the United States and the USSR were in the middle of their Cold War, building bigger weapons, faster vehicles, and even going so far as digging holes towards the Earth's core in strange attempts to outdo the other in nearly every way. Luckily, the Cold War remained cold, and shots were never fired, but both sides were developing ways to wage war in the cold reaches of space. So at the time, the United States Air Force had proposed their Manned Orbiting Laboratory, or MOL, to see how useful having soldiers in Earth's orbit could be. MOL would be built on the ground and launched into orbit via a Titan 3C rocket, and the baseline configuration would have involved a two-person spacecraft that would launch from Earth and connect to the station. Astronauts would spend about a month's Earth time before coming back down and briefing their superiors on the goings-on of the Soviet Union. The original plan for the MOL called for the space station to be up and running by the end of 1969, and that date was pushed back to 1971, and that date was eventually pushed back to never. The U.S. Defense Secretary estimated the cost of building, launching, and maintaining MOL to be in the ballpark of about $3 billion, which even at the time was nearly an unthinkable figure. And while the idea of MOL was cool, it was really born out of paranoia. Number 5. Space Factory The International Space Station has been the gold standard of orbital structures for over 20 years, but nothing lasts forever. Seeing as how it's in space, the station is as difficult as it is expensive to maintain, and despite the best efforts of engineers, it's deteriorating and will cease operations within most of our lifetimes. But something has to come next, and that something is the Space Factory. What was once an annex for the ISS, the Space Factory will really do exactly what it sounds like and fly hardware around on its own and becoming a free-flying commercial destination. But aside from being a beacon of space trade, the Space Factory is one workplace that's open to visitors, assuming they can afford the $50 million round-trip ticket price. Number 4. The Transhab Goodyear has their blimp, so then why not kick things up a notch or two and aim a little higher? How about as high as space? In 1961, the same year that humans were able to put a man in space, the good folks at Goodyear designed the concept inflatable space station. The station would be sent up into orbit and then inflated once it reached the vastness of space, just like a rubber wheel, complete with pressurized compartments to provide living and working spaces for those lucky enough to be on board. And while the thought of what is essentially a giant rubber tire in space sounds a bit cartoonish, it provides a much easier alternative than sending thousands of tons worth of steel. It's simply lighter, which means less fuel and less money to launch it. The Transhab module was about 90 feet in diameter with a Kevlar shell one foot thick, which is strong enough to withstand micrometeorites and the like, as well as the strong vacuum of space. The Transhab from Goodyear was never launched, which is too bad, because it would have been the world's first space donut. Number 3. 2001 – A Space Odyssey Stanley Kubrick's 2001 – A Space Odyssey is without a doubt one of the greatest American films of all time. It raised some thought-provoking questions about artificial intelligence and our relationship to machines and our place in the universe. 
but the ever-ambitious Kubrick and his production team also created some of the greatest concept space vessels the world will ever know. And 50 years after the film's release, the iconic double-wheeled space station has yet to be outdone. The space station concept was based on the ideas and creations of Werner von Braun, famed aerospace engineer and space architect who believed that the circular space station were our future. The station was nearly 3,000 feet in diameter, located right between the Earth and our Moon, which was fully realized both inside and out. Detailed drawings were made to display every nitty-gritty detail of every nook and cranny. And who can forget that mind-blowing scene where the intergalactic Pan Am flight attendant caught a pen floating in zero gravity and then proceeded to walk about the cabin upside down. The film predicted so many technologies that we use today, and hopefully the double-wheel space station will give engineers an idea to strive for. Number 2. The Orbital Ring the next concept space station on this list is dedicated to anyone who was told to keep their heads out of the clouds when they were younger. The Orbital Ring, that sounds like something from a certain hit sci-fi video game, but British author, scientist, and engineer Paul Birch proposed the structure in 1982, and to him, it's a very plausible endeavor for the not-so-distant future. The Orbital Ring is a space elevator that revolves around the Earth in its orbit using a rotating cable. The cable is placed in low Earth orbit just above the equator. From there, Birch proposes that the cable will move just a pinch faster than the Earth itself. From here, superconducting magnets are placed on the ring, all of which are connected via even more cables. Only these are made from high tensile strength to mass ratios. It may sound complicated, but it's incredibly simple. It's a ring around the Earth that lets you travel all across the globe. The only catch is you have to get to space first and then back down, and we have to find ways to construct it. But if they can build the ISS, then they can probably figure out the orbital ring. And while the whole concept of this megastructure may sound like a $31 billion fever dream of insane proportions, scientists, engineers, and research students have been looking at ways to make this dream a reality for over 40 years, and they found that, although difficult, it's totally doable. Number 1. Ring Worlds Space is the place, and while it might not happen in our lifetimes, humans will be building megastructures and space stations out in the void eventually. And one of those might just be the Ring World. The idea for the Ring World is to create an artificial ring with a radius equal to the Earth's orbit around the Sun, with a star in the middle, and the ring will spin to create artificial gravity. From there, humans live on even more artificial planets. It's another structure that sounds like it belongs in a video game or an old pulp novel, but the likelihood of one existing feels increasingly real as people like Elon Musk insist that humans become a multi-planet species. And while ring worlds have appeared in plenty of popular forms of media, this is where so many scientists get their ideas for future projects. As it stands now, though, ring worlds are purely speculative, but in a world where Dyson spheres are studied, nothing can be ruled out. And at the rate things are going, we may need a good plan B for the Earth in the near future. But if we're to be realistic about the ring worlds, the amount of energy they need to sustain themselves is so insurmountable that it could take centuries or millennia before humans find a solution. As it stands now, a ring world would require a few hundred years worth of our sun's energy to operate efficiently. If these astral megastructures are ever built, us, our children, and children's children, even their children, will be long gone. But it may be our grandchildren a dozen generations from now that may live alongside one. Watch our future playlist for more top 15 videos about the future. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best future-related videos.